Hey, Helen, how are you? Howdy. <laughs> um, for those of you who haven't met me, my name's Nicholas Pissaris, and I'm joined here by a friend and colleague, Helen Samatakos from Pilates in Sync in uh, Menai, New South Wales. Menai, Sydney, New South Wales. Good represent, thing. Represent favourite colour green. Yeah. Um, we're very, I'm very happy because Helen agreed to present at the third and final virtual Pilates summit on her, one of her favorite topics, uh, which is Pilates, uh, for elite athletes. Helen presented at the first summit and we had such a great time, but also we're in complete awe, um, because Helen brought along two of her favorite athletes to work with. And it was just wonderful seeing Pilates in a um, you know, in an everyday regular studio, but catered to and for these brilliant top end athletes. What do you reckon, Helen? What's it like working with these fantastic movers? Um, fantastic because they're so um, elite and great movers, but also very hard work on the other end. So quite challenging, um, dealing with some egos and expectations, but I soon push that aside and we get on with it. So um, yeah, a lot of people ask me, how do I get all these athletes and where do they come from? Was that your next thing you were going to say? No, I was going to say it annoys me that people say that. <laughs> well, I just say I'm bloody good. What do you want? Yeah, um, you've been in it for a hundred years and you go yeah, to your workshop yeah, under the sun. And it's word of mouth, you know, athletes know each other. Um, it's a very concentrated kind of, you know, um, area, even though there's different domains in sports I teach. So word of mouth, people see things on Instagram or they think they tag other people and they say you should do this. So, um, which is great. So it's, it's real old school word of mouth, but for a, for, it seems like a, a newer generation because you're not dealing with the usual word of mouth referrals in a suburban Pilates studio generally are older and like one generation down to the next exactly right but these are kind of you know sometimes sometimes they're not even teenagers yet uh and ge generally they're i guess in their early 20s and they're elite level athletes and um and what strikes me as interesting is that you have become equally adept in artistic athletic sports as um you know goal oriented um, pursuits so you've got elite or national level rugby players but also you've got 10 year old artistic or rhythm rhythmic gymnasts yeah not quite 10 probably 12 or okay. 14 yep yeah. um yeah the rhythmic gymnasts are amazing um and you're right and then the rugby player i just adapt to that just um i guess i i read the the, the client very well and learn them very quickly. I ask a lot of questions. If they want to play music, I play music. Um, sometimes I have to keep the studio kind of free so that there's a bit more privacy for some of clients. Others are happy to work with others in the room. Mm -hmm. It's a bit of shuffling, um, hard at times, but with COVID it's a bit easier now because the, the NRL players are in the bubble. So they, they do online with me, some of them, and they don't come in face to face. I've got a bit more of a breather, but for the other athletes, I, um, yeah, I adapt to them quite well, which is draining, but it's okay. But it, I feel like the um, agility, the Pilates, the comprehensively trained Pilates teacher has unmatched agility. Because yes. we're used to, especially if we are, you know, brought up in the old way of working of a semi-private session and you've got, you know, an athlete, a pregnant person, someone with spondylolisthesis, and then, you know, a brand new person. You know, we've been trained to work like that. So it looks like it's very comfortable for you. you yes. Might be working furiously, but, um, you know, it's, it's certainly great to see it. And I think the way that you ask those questions organically leads to, it seems to lead to really solid buy-in. And it looks like your athlete clients want to be there as they, opposed to just like, I'm here because the coach told me. Yeah, that's right. And they travel from far and wide. I've got people that drive over an hour to see me. Um, so I guess they were told to come or they want to come. And they want to better their sport. So they want that edge over somebody else. So they, they, will, they will travel and they will fit it in right. on their very, very, very tight, busy schedules. Yeah. 
even that one hour a week makes a difference to a lot of uh, the, the athletes that I see. So why do you think it is, Helen? Because a lot of, um, you know, I think many of us make assumptions that an elite athlete has unlimited resources. We know that that's not true for all codes and all disciplines. But we, but we do see an increased um, use of sports scientists and gyms and, you know, compared to 10, 20, 30 years ago, why is it that Pilates kind of has this cut through for them and gives them a competitive advantage? I think not just the core focus, but the mobility aspect and um, it, the planes of movement that, that we do um, for all the sports. Um, for instance, golf, which I have, I'll be using a, one of my elite athletes um, plays golf and I will show in the workshop the, the things I do for the upper and the lower body um, movement. So, you know, um, just we focus, we've got so many good pieces of equipment that we can focus on things like ankle mobility for our foot corrector. And it's not generic like it is when they go to the gym and they might just do BOSU work or they might just do um, TheraBand work. We are very specific with what we do and I integrate it throughout the whole session. So I think that just we offer it's a real cool variation. It's so like, it's so exciting and people love seeing the Pilates stuff. Always people comment on videos. Wow. That looks so good. I want to be able to do it. And um, yeah, it just, it's definitely become more popular hundred percent in the 20 years I've been teaching. That's for sure. Do you feel like, although it's on a completely, maybe it's a different scale. Do you feel like athletes, um, at the levels that you work with lack the same things that general public do, like segmental spinal control and kind of fine motor control? Because they're doing movement all the time, regularly, repeatedly. Um, they get into faulty movement patterns like anyone else sitting at a desk with desk spine at a computer. So definitely, um, yes, exactly. <laughs> so, yeah, but just on a different level. Of, yeah. yeah. So, um, you're right. So at the last workshop, we were fortunate to have a very talented young male cricketer and a top level um, netballer. No, wrong. No, Matilda's soccer. Yeah, soccer. I'm so sorry. She's now currently um, in Amsterdam playing for a team I can't even pronounce. Um, she sends her best. She, I told her I was doing this again. Um, so cool. Who have you, what type of disciplines or what's the focus of this next workshop? I have a diver and I Ooh. see three divers at the moment um, mm -hmm. and they are top, top, top level. Um, and one of the girls I'll be having is a diver and she's been with me 12 months and she is, if you've been following my Instagram, you will be seeing a lot of things that I do with this diver. Mm -hmm. She's outstanding. Um, and also I'll be doing golf. I have two golfers that come to me, male and female, and I'll be using Harry, who is a male golfer, to show, uh, which is a great, even if you're not an elite and you play yeah, golf. I mean, so many great of tips for that. Yeah. yeah. Hey, I'm um, watching, for, you know, from an educated consumer's perspective, watching your Instagram stories and the work that you do with some, some of the divers, I guess some of the more like high level Pilates clients that you have. You do a lot of um, endurance based sequences and a lot of um, noticed. Sorry. You've noticed. Yeah. Well, I had to bounce back after you said I was wrong before. <laughs> because of Amy's sport. I'm so sorry. It's all good. Um, yes, I do. How, how, how do the divers in particular find, um, you know, it looks like they can do everything. Uh, not everything. Uh, I just make them look good. Um, mm -hmm. so <laughs> How many takes before you record? <laughs> oh, it depends. But usually mm -hmm. it's about three times, two or three, and then we get it. Well, it's good for um, appearance, right? Yeah. Sometimes I like to show the bloopers or I say skatar, which means shit, do it again. Um, but generally... First time is rare if they get it, but generally speaking, two or three times. But that is all part of it, you know, like do it again. And a good coach will do that. Yeah. No, wasn't happy, do it again. Twist That's more, it. lead Amazing. together. That's what they're used to. Exactly. Yeah, do it. Do it again. Do it better. Yeah, and I'm quite firm with them and abrupt, if you like, or, you know, um, very to the point. And they don't get phased at all because they have so many coaches 
in whatever sport they're doing, my athletes that just are used to them getting yelled at, literally. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess they're there for the right reasons. I mean, athlete buy-in and um, intrinsic motivation, it's very different to working with the intrinsic motivation of the general public. Um, yeah. Because rain, hail or shine, a runner runs. Exactly right. Exactly so, right. Doesn't matter. But they're just making you look good. <laughs> <laughs> like, for instance, this morning I had um, one of my elite rhythmic gymnasts, she was in the studio, um, school holidays, and I had, there was a circuit class in the background of just your regular, normal tax-paying people that pay your sure. rent. Good thanks. Yeah. And they All were the clients. They kept getting distracted watching him <laughs> on the Cadillac. And I'm like, you need to focus on what you're doing and you need to focus on what you're doing. And I was like, can you pay attention? <laughs> and they're going to show I speak to their teacher. They were saying, Should I speak like that? And Delene was like, Yes, she does. She's always like that. And my elite athlete was very normal about it. She's yeah. used to just blocking out or just doing what she's told. So I think the normal people don't really get it. They just yeah. think, oh my God, like how hard is this? But it's good for them to see. Yeah, absolutely. I was complaining to a friend the other day that my body doesn't do what it used to, but then I realized and admitted that I don't train the way I used to. And of course my hips won't function in a certain way if I don't bathe them in it. But um, just going back to what you're saying about concentration and, you know, multitasking or at least dual tasking i'm always spellbound at um athletic events like gymnastics and and diving how there's like with gymnastics in a big event there are six things happening at the same time yeah and so the tv coverage is of the, is of the rings but then floor horse like all these other athletes are going at the same time and i it's guess the same as athletics with you you've got your, your pole vault or your high jump and then you've got your long jump going on on the side. You don't mm. know where to look. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess um, Pilates in sync keeps the competitive edge by providing distraction. <laughs> 100%. Um, we've both got clients at three o'clock, so we've got a motor. But Helen, can't wait to have you close out the final virtual Pilates summit on 18 October. 1 p.m. till three. Oh! <laughs> Oppa! Two, two athletes on show. So you'll be getting lots of demonstrations, lots of variations. Um, I'll show you some warm-ups I do with these athletes. Um, and it's you get to have a look at you know their injuries and what how I've worked around it. Um, it's great. I hope I hope people log in and get some good ideas and tune in and mm. buy tickets. Don't forget recordings are available. So you can see it after for up to 14 days. Yeah, see, last time that didn't happen and people were saying, I wish, I wish. Well, look what um, we do. We provide. So let's... Value you for money. <laughs> Absolutely. Helen, can't wait to see you then. Can't wait. Thanks very much for having me and uh, so long farewell. Fit as in. Good night.